All right, today what we're going to do, we're going to talk about turbo razor, clutch over travel, or belt over travel, and a way to check it. Um, but before we get too deep into this or get started, I just want to remind you guys, as always, I love to advertise our belts because that's kind of why we're here. We're testing and making sure. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Jenny and Ross from, they drove two and a half hours to bring me their turbo razor because I didn't have access to one to do a little testing on something here and uh, checking things out. And uh, so appreciate them. Make sure you subscribe. Here's a little scribe down here. Usually it's going to be a little high. Link to our website. Uh, make sure you, you know, subscribe. And you'll get notifications when we do new videos. All right, moving on. So what we're going to do today is, is we're going to show you how to check belt over travel. Um, I, I did some of this obviously ahead of time so I know what we were doing, make sure everything was cool. Um, and I'm, I'm going to try to find a good place to insert some footage I've already taken uh, on a primary clutch. And uh, so just, and I'll, you'll probably be getting a double piece of it because I can't even remember what I said there. But basically is, is we were, I was checking to see what limits the travel of the primary clutch, what actually stopped it from moving because if you, the clutch is is it goes in and when it stops the belt can't travel any further in the top of it and any lower in the secondary so I, went, I needed to see what limited the travel in a primary clutch and on a turbo what limits it is a plastic washer or spacer sitting on top of the spring and so when the clutch closes in it gets sandwiched between uh, the spider and the cover and that's it. Some people think that the cover bottoms out on the spider and that's not true. And, and the biggest reason for this video is some aftermarket clutch kits tell you to remove the speed limiting spacer to guess why? Increase your speed. Well, guess what happens? It increases your belt travel, which gives you top speed, but then it'll pull your belt down into the secondary clutch and blow your belt, hence the video, hence it all, because we are in constant checking of things when somebody reports, and there's another video I mentioned, four people in one day with turbos, blew a belt of ours, and we had to get to the bottom of it, and all four had the same aftermarket clutch kit and all four did not have a speed limit spacer. So let's, let's just get on to it. So if you want to check your clutch kit or even your clutch for any modifications you did or for whatever reason, maybe you're just blowing belts, I'm gonna give you hopefully a quick down and dirty deal and past this talking, we, I've done a lot of the work for you so we're gonna speed it up, but I wanna give you the process, okay? So I'm just gonna get out of the camera so you can get to see my pretty self. But anyway, here we go. All right, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is, is take your belt off. Now with the turbo in your tool kit, you got this handy little tool and screw it in. And by the power of magic, bam, it's done. All right, so let's roll this belt off. Uh, I hate it. There we go. Let's peel this over here. Maybe we'll just take it on off. Guess what belt this is? Our belt. All right, so then I want to loosen this back up. Oh, like magic, we're almost out. If I actually owned a turbo, I would get a screw that I could use on an electric tool for that. All right, then you remove the bolt, 15 millimeter. Oh man, that was already loose, wow. All right, make sure you don't lose anything. There's a little washer. This is a 19 model. Uh, some of the others may be different. Uh, I can't vouch for it, never seen one of them. So this is the 19 model. All right, and take it off. All right, now what, what we're concerned about is, let's get in a spot here. We're worried about travel. You see that how that's dark and then light colored? There's a, a radius here and then the center portion. Uh, one of these guys sent me a picture of the day and there were black marks down in this from over travel. So when you're testing it, you're gonna take it off. And, and if you happen to separate these two or before you do, put you a couple marks so that it goes back because you could take this apart and 
turn it. So make sure that you uh, mark it so it can go to the same place. This is a balanced assembly. All right, well, let's just because I ain't got three hands, let's take this off. All right, then you take your marker and you just mark on this. And you want to come down, might as well come down in here. All right, and mark it. All right. Then we're going to put it back together and we're going to put her right back on. Right. There it goes. put our belt back on. Now usually you always want to put these belts on so that you can read it if you were up top. So when you flick it you read it. Belts by the way are not not directional. So to get it back on guess what we got to do and I know this is a pain in the butt. I'm doing it for video and I'm just doing it back to back and that's a pain. All right, we got her back in. Get your belt on. I guess you could use this for a video of how to put a belt on too. And guess what? Unscrew it. There we go. Alright. Now, just rotate it. It's a neutral. Rotate it until the belt settles in. Okay. At this point, what you do is is of course I'm up on a lift, but you get in and you crank it up. It, I, I'm going to tell you we do this a lot on cold engines. I don't like it. If you want to warm yours up first, probably good advice. But what, all you got to do is crank it up, and I'm not going to do it for time's sake, is you crank this thing up <coughs> and uh, rev it on up to nearly rev limiter right at it for a few seconds. And so what we're doing is, is this belt is, is Go, coming up in this one, down in here, and it's knocking that black mark off to see belt travel, okay? And uh, so I'll show you when we get to the market, all right? Once again, by the magic of television. All right, I've ribbed it up. I've done the travel. Now, let's do the check it out. Once again, we spread it, spread it. Our belt's off. Unscrew. Alright, we got our tool back out. Alright, we got our screw back out. Take your bolt back out. That washer. And be careful because you can pull this side out. We could do that if we wanted to, but let's pull it off. All right, let's spread it apart. Actually, where's my mark? All right. So, uh, what you can see right here is where I ran it and all that, that mark came, came off down to the exact proper location, which is right here, where the, what I call the flat or the belt surface of the secondary is. The problem, if we had an over-travel issue, somebody left the washer out, and, and that could have even been Polaris. This uh, guy's washer was upside down, as you'll see in that little clip in a minute. But point is, is it could have got left out. The clutch kit people that you bought a clutch kit for till you leave it out, or you left it out, or whatever, it's got to go in there. Or when you do this test, you're going to see it go down in here. All right. Now, there's, I guess sometimes these, the shaft spacing can get off and have other issues, or a belt that's wrong. But anytime at high speeds, just like a, a 
XP-1000, if you had any condition that even got down into that radius right there, you would increase belt temperature. So, uh, so anybody out there that says, I don't have anything, it's bone stock. I keep blowing belts at high speed. Check this, and if it over travels for whatever, then you gotta dig around, find out what's causing it. So it's just another good thing to stop you from blowing belts. All right, so now, I don't think I need to show you how to put it on one more time but basically put it back on, put your belt back on. We've well, seen how to get that on and off a couple of times. So I'm gonna enter in that other section of video and I apologize about the weird transition from this to that. And again, I don't even remember what I said in it. And I guess after I edit this, I will know. The point is, let's, let's click over to it and see what she looks like. All right, what we're doing or looking at here on this turbo clutch is, is part of today's testing for me, this is a weekend, but not sure how that's gonna mix in with my main video, but let's just skip to all that. Hey, right, what limits the travel in a primary clutch on a turbo? And this was, was part of what I'm trying to figure out today. I don't know if we can, you can zoom in. I'll actually take it apart here in a second and show you, but there's a black plastic washer. So this compressor is simulating full speed or top speed or full travel, whatever you wanna talk about it, by squeezing it down as far as they go. All right, so anyone who thinks that the spider hits the cover and that limits the travel would be wrong. All right, I'm gonna show you. There is a feeler gauge that moves up underneath it. And actually, uh, that I forget what they call these, but these guides is actually loose. So what, what stops the travel of the clutch is this speed limiting spacer that's in a, a stock turbo. So any clutch kit that asks you to remove that, you better say no, because that's part of what's blowing belts in turbos. And I'm going to quickly take this apart and show you this spacer and tell you something else about it. Okay, I could not get this customer's, uh, this let me use his razor's clutch off, so I have a brand new clutch. So I was, and I didn't have this, this spacer. Well, lo and behold, I found out something about his clutch and about these spacers. All right, since I got this camera zoomed in, see that little lip? That should go towards the spring, all right? It sits like so. It should go down. He is, was upside down. What problem did it cause? If you can see, see that bushing, how it's sticking out a little bit at the top? That's because it put this spacer, limiting spacer in upside down, and then as, as he's driving, it was pushing his bushing out. Here's a brand new cover, and as you see, it's flush, and this, this wouldn't even go there, all right? It actually goes this way. So any of you guys with turbos and fooling with your clutch kits or clutching or cleaning it or whatever it is you're doing, make sure that you get your space limiting, uh, speed limiting spacer back in. Never run without this. I don't care who promised you faster top speeds. You had to go faster to you blow a belt from over travel. So it goes down and then the cover. So basically this is just a, a quick section of a video to show you about over travel and what, what actually limits the travel of a turbo primary clutch. Right. So now you got to take a look at the primary and what limits it, which we talked about in the beginning. We just talked about it there. So at the end of the day, I hope that you uh, learned something about belt travel and checking it and the possibility of it blowing belts if you missed out your, your washer or got some clutch kit that doesn't have it. Uh, I know it, it was uh, super nice for Ross and Jenny to bring their turbo over here to let me take a look at it and also find that their space limiting washer was upside down uh, for them. Uh, so anyway, you got any questions, give us a call here at Hunter Works. Thanks.